Check. One, two, unit one, two, and three are missing. Check, check. Unit three, four, four, five, and six are unknown. Check, check. Internet blackout. Check. We are into day 19. My goodness. Even though it's actually 979 days. Probably wrong by a day or two. Feel free to ninny at me. I don't mind. It's actually cool. But when you think about the fact that... Uh, I put a link below the video of Fearwind's latest video. Talking about Unit 4. And Unit 4 has been distorted. has been blown apart. What happened was there's uh, pools above it. And when uh, that, seven point, or that uh, original earthquake lifted it up and dropped it and broke its back. And so all the hard water came out of it and they start pouring in salt water but zirconian coatings uh, caught fire and, and burnt off and created these gases and that uh, apparently um, caused a nuclear detonation according to the isotopes that were released and found and identified and that's how they know that one in particular was so they claim anyway that one in particular they say is a nuclear detonation now one two and three which are missing um, can't remember, somebody left a comment there an hour ago. And they were saying rocks melt at 2,000 degrees. And if the cores are 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, then it's not likely they're going to sit on that rock bed, which is a pretty darn good point. And I don't know what the actual numbers are for melting rock. Uh, I didn't think it was 2,000, so he gave it a lot of uh, freeway that uh, I can't remember who it was. Oh, that's a good one. Last second for everything. And let me go back. So the, there's a link on below. Uh, remove TEPCO before you remove the fuel rods. And that's from Fairwinds in his video. I get the link below that for his video. You can watch after or watch now or whatever works for you. But that's a really good video where he breaks down how... I want you to think about Unit 4. It had that explosion. had all this debris falling on top of it. Uh, and those pools were empty. He sprayed in salt water. Of course, that corroded everything. That's the first problem. Corroding, you corrode two metals, they'll stick together, right? True electrolysis. And they'll actually stick together. And so when you go to pull these rods up that are brittle because the zirconium has burnt off it. And this is supposed to be hard water. And so they're just spraying water. Apparently, it's fresh water now, but this is all contaminated. Uh, plus, it it's, uh, breaks down, makes the, makes the rods brittle. And so the pools are distorted. They're actually twisted and distorted and snapped in places. The entire building is snapped. Now they got a Kevlar um, shrink, what they call shrink wrap. Now shrink wrap is usually you go into the Tiger Torch and you, you put your shrink wrap up and you heat up it with the Tiger Torch and that draws it and then permanently stays so it got some integrity, right? But we're talking about a 10-story building. And shrink wrap is not going to cut it, okay? Uh, if it snaps anywhere, then the whole, it loses entire integrity when, when it comes to shrink wrap. You know how a piece of paper tears? Imagine a piece of paper that's really tight, and then you tear it. You know what happens next, right? And, and take an earthquake where it can rattle for a full minute, like the 7.2 on October 25th, 19 days ago, hence the title of the video. And the internet is shut down in Japan we don't know what's going on. Uh, we know that there's no YouTube videos, no Facebook posts. Uh, there's no millions of Facebook posts. There's no millions of Twitter. There's no millions of Instagrams. Uh, 200 million people in that country, and we don't see that metadata on the net no more. And people insist that a video here or dear allegedly from Japan is proof to have a free and open internet, particularly since uh, TEPCO's webcam didn't go down, so everybody refers to that. Everybody. Media, everybody says, oh, Webco, uh, Webco, uh, Webco again. Tepco's webcam is right there, folks. Everything looks good. I mean, that's ludicrous. The most ludicrous statement you could ever make. And so are they really going to work on Building 4? We don't know. We don't think that actually is still standing after the 7.2 earthquake, particularly when you look at 10 days before that in the Philippines, a 7.2 threw up hundreds of millions of tons for hundreds of miles and destroyed highways and communities, 100,000 homes. But nothing happened at Fukushima, right? Thank you, ABC. Thank you, CNN. No wonder you're dying, and no, one no, and no wonder nobody trusted them anymore. So back to Fear Wins. The link is under the video. 
and it's uh, remove Tepco before and, and imprison them and then uh, publicly hang them. Uh, is my suggestion, but hey, you know, that's just me and a couple of hundred million people on this planet as they wake up are much more angrier. And that's the whole problem. Um, what do we tell people? You know, if you looked up in the space and there was a meteorite coming at Earth and it's going to take two years to hit Earth, you couldn't hide away from it, so you would have to come out and people would say, what the hell is that? And, oh my goodness, it's going to hit Earth and how much damage is it going to do? Imagine it's going to do the same damage as what TEPCO's uh, catastrophic event in Japan, I'll say, because I'll go down that road in a bit. But so um, that, that meteorite is coming at your planet. And so the whole world comes together to stop that meteorite, just like in the Hollywood movies, right? And so, but we can't do that for Japan. We can't do that for uh, the dead Pacific Ocean anymore, you know, because they never told us for the first 900 days how much was hemorrhaging into that ocean. And they kept everything so secret. There's only been the last 60 days, really, that we've been able to come up 100% with numbers that are so frightening. I'm sure the numbers were out there before that. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of smart people on this planet, a lot of very, very, very intelligent, credible people have been screaming about this from day one, okay? Many, many, many. I'm saying right now and today, we have to look at this different. Right? We can no, no longer shun our responsibilities. We can no longer wait for somebody else to pick up the slack. And we certainly can't wait any longer for voices to rise up. And we see that now, that people are rising to this occasion at an incredible increasing rate to the point where now they're, they're going to try to close down the Internet here, too, and everywhere else with the SOPAs and the PIPAs and the ACNAs and the open... Uh, draconian internet laws that are, you know, because go up to YouTube right now and type in full-length movies and you'll get all the Hollywood movies. But they want to demonize you if you download it or you're watching it. You see how stupid this is? They feed it to you and then they blame you for watching it. And then they try to come in with rules and regulations and base it up on that you're after stealing the movies. So why don't they just put Google in jail for stealing all the movies? Why do they want to put you in jail, see? So I digressed. Let me come back. Building 4 is uh, David Suzuki had made that statement on, on uh, October the 30th, five days after the, the earthquake at Fukushima, centered off Fukushima, I should say. And I know people want to ninny me to dead. Oh, it's 200 miles offshore. Like, that's the most stupidest thing you could ever say to anybody. Because an earthquake doesn't matter it's 200 miles off floor that's uh, off the coastline that's the whole point of it it doesn't matter because it could those earthquakes have uh, 7.2 is like an 800 mile earthquake so being 200 miles away just means he's got 200 miles now to pick up speed and misery and that's the reality of it it doesn't slow down you know till uh, and fukushima was considered the epic center even though it was 200 miles away people wanted to me to dead about that you know, you're really wasting your time uh, trying to use that line on me. It's just like all the Japanese people, uh, men, saying they talk to their wives all the time <laughs> in Japan on emails. The same message now, like 30 times from 30 different people. That's the PR firms. And hi to the PR firms. I know you're watching. And so are all the people that are concerned and angry and worried. And I made 17 videos where I politely put our case out there. And then I made one video where I angrily last night put my true case out there, my true feelings. And because sometimes that has to come out of you, particularly when the PR firms are on your video bugging at you, picking at you. That's how what's going to happen at the end of the video is I'm going to snap and say the truth that I like to see these people swinging from poles. I mean, yeah, I mean, I would. I can't, can't blame you for something like that, right? And you can't blame anybody else because I can assure you a lot of people are saying worse things about that out in the threads. Building 4 has all these pools above it. They went dry. They're full of these rods and that a piece of those rods can kill everybody in a restaurant in an hour for a billion years. And you can just drag people out of the restaurant, fill it back up an hour later, that'll, they'll all be dead. And you can drag all those dead bodies out in the parking lot and stack them up and fill up that McDonald's and hour later they'll be dead and you can do that every day till the end of time with just a piece that fits into a little Dixie cup one third the size of this mug that's how dangerous it is right so when the spammers 
and the trolls are out there and they're saying, oh, there's nothing to worry about. I like to see them uh, chew and suck on one of those depleted uranium rods for a few minutes. And when they're picking their teeth up off the ground, I like to ask them, do they still have those uh, thoughts in their heads? Because anybody that even tries to look at this knows right away that it's a ridiculous statement. But if you're being paid to say that stuff, then you're being paid to murder people. You're being paid to trick people. You're being paid uh, to sell your soul for a paycheck. I mean, my goodness, you must be the most uh, horrible person on the planet to take that job. Anybody who takes that job and doesn't quit and walk away and become a whistleblower hates humanity and are hateful people, you know, truly are hateful, uh, hideous people. We really, true. we need a team of experts out there, forensic experts, tracking these people down to find out who they are so we can have a Nuremberg trials for them too later because they're murdering people each time they make that statement for TEPCOs and those PR firms, those nuclear PR firms are at it too. They're on the video right now and they'll be watching it later again, looking for weaknesses to chip away at me. And that's because there's not enough voices out there, right? Right now, I'm one of the. I'm here every day, and so they got nothing else to do but sharpen their knives on me, stab away at me. I'm a throwaway to them. See, just go out and hammer away at this guy. Get used to it. There's more coming down the road. That's the way they work. See, and because I speak so many facts, they can't find a way to debunk me, so they just have to come out and stab at me. They can't actually come out and bludgeon the things that I'm saying. <clears throat> and that everybody else is saying, and that is common knowledge. They just want you to stop talking about it for some reason. You're not allowed to talk about it. You can't have credibility if you talk about it. Well, the people that talk about it don't have credibility unless they tell the truth. And because not many of them are doing that, I exist. And I have that responsibility on my own shoulders because I don't see other people out there. Like I say, you know, if a thousand people were doing it, I wouldn't have to do it, and neither would the people that have been at it constantly, continuously, you know, for, for a long time, at all costs, because they get it, and, and they got it right away. It wasn't hard. Once they tasted the truth and understood that, then the, the moral responsibility takes over. It's like, um, if your house is burning down, do you run away and leave your family behind? Do you Do you yell and say fire, you know? And if you don't, that's what a, a PR firm is. They're the people that would run out of their house and let their families burn because they're so trained to turn their heads towards misery, away from misery, and just lie. That they won't be able to tell their family the house is burning. They're literally like that. Because when you're going out and putting comments on my threads and other people's threads, trying to marginalize what the truth is, and we really don't know how terrible this is, outside of the fact there's three cores that are melted down, gone. And that there's 4.3 billion gallons a day running over that. There's a million gallons for each core. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. There's 978 days gone by. The ocean is full. We have the models from the German institutes, from the academic, and then the peer-reviewed studies that are just, these are the go-to models, and they just input the data that TEPCO gave them for a lousy two weeks release, and the ocean was radiated but not a huge, like, uh, huge doses of radiation coming out of it. But that, but we, we ne if we were to put the 300 tons a day model into that, everybody on this planet would go into panic mode. It would be like looking up and seeing that meteorite, and it's only two days instead of two years. Right now, we have a meteorite coming at us, and we have two years to get ready, two years to think ahead, two years to do the right thing, two years to pull up stakes and go to somewhere where that meteorite is not going to slam into you. Is that what you would do? Or would you sit here and say, oh, you know, it'll be okay. The meteorite won't get me. It'll push it up and land somewhere else. It won't get me. You won't think that way, see? And because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't uh, hear it, you can't taste it, you can't pick it up or nothing. A lot of people can't wrap their mind around this creature that uh, is going to consume this ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and then leach out into all the other oceans at a time. And so we need to get on that meteorite. Um, thinking side right away and how we're going to deal with what's coming and the after effects of it. And I don't mean FEMA camps and I don't mean a police state. I mean a civilization that deals with it. 
And it's truly like that. Look at what happened to the Philippines uh, seven days ago. Look at what kind of desperation they're in right now. And you can see what could happen uh, down the road in, in these events. Uh, that ocean is going to produce all kinds of typhoons over here. Right? right along the entire coastline of the Pacific Ocean going to get typhoons. Forget about, I'm sorry, for, uh, not typhoons, but F4 hurricanes that are a thousand miles wide. Coming and chewing up coastlines for hundreds and hundreds of miles where it strips every tree off right down to the rock. That's what's going to happen as this ocean heats up. All this, you know, 4.3 billion gallons a day. Just the 300 uh, tons a day model will do the same thing. It heats that ocean up, the storms get more intense. It's like what you would expect to see on Mars and other planets. And that we have to look at it as a meteorite in order for us to comprehend it, I think, is the better way to go about it. Because a lot of people just can't wrap their mind around that radiation. There's so many aspects to it. There's so many different types of uh, these isotopes. You need 1,300 Geiger counters and you need to calibrate them. You need to know what each of the isotopes are and calibrate them and know how to use them. Each of those people, those 1,300 people that are going to use the Geiger counters in shifts of eight hours, right? You see how ludicrous this gets. That you need an army of this and an army of that and a budget like a city and a budget like... And um, you need to take all the institutions on the planet and put them to work on this. Just like you would if you had a big meteorite coming at you. No difference. If that's what we would do if we had all those meteorites, we had a big meteorite coming at us, we'd have everybody, yeah. I won't swear, but we'd have everybody get their head out of their armpits, like chickens, in no time at all. And say, yeah, well, let's get busy. Let's start bellowing rockets to go up and deal with that. And we'd have Bruce Willis and everybody, yeah, cheering on, right? We're dealing with that. That's coming at us hardcore. And this accumulates. It's not stopped. It's not going to stop for another 40 years because nobody, and worst of all, TEFCO won't go away. TEFCO will not stop, uh, you know, that control grid they got there. We need the entire world's community to be able to land in there and get busy. They're ready. They know about it. They're not stupid. TEFCO is not even engineers. They're operators. They absolutely have no right to be doing this. That military industrial machine has to be in there. I mean, they got to go in there anyway with guns to push out the Yakuza's. They got about 140 contractors in there of the mob. And so you need to go in there with guns because the mob ain't going to move unless they see something bigger and badder in their way and they can't deal with it. Then they, they're not stupid. They'll move on. They're not going to let go of this multi-trillion dollar uh, money hole. They don't want that job, the reality of it is. Who would want that job? How can you enjoy your life? dealing with this every day. See, they just want the normal racketeering. They don't want to be in this nuclear facility poisoning the entire planet. Do you think anybody wants that job? Like in a mob sense? No. But they're stuck there, and they're the only people who can supply the people because uh, Japan won't let anybody else in there. And it's this good old boys school, or who knows what they're doing on purpose. They're probably doing it on purpose for some other reason that we don't know about. Right? We can't rule none of that out because nothing else makes sense. Why would you kill our planet so you can have a paycheck? Why would you spam my comment section so you can have a paycheck is another question I overdone last night. Uh, but you got no choice sometimes. We got to really, you know, you only got such a short time left now to use your voice. You truly have because they're coming after the internet now. And so people have to get articulate and start using their voice. Even if it's just one minute, type it all out and just sit there with the paper like this in front of your face and read it out. That's the most scariest thing on the planet to them. Period. It really is. And they can't censor all of us. And everybody's begged everybody to do this. And everybody's waiting for the mainstream media to come out. And what's going to happen then is going to be total, utter chaos, total panic, and total uh, disinformation. Right? In order to herd people and control people, we need a controlled wake-up unless they can come out and, and unite the planet for the event that it is, like a meteorite coming at us, ready to crush our planet, and we would all unite, see? I can't say it enough times, because I think that's the way everybody's going to have to learn to look at this. This is a meteorite coming at us, 
So what are we going to do about it? We're going to go stomp Japan out of the way and, and do the job ourselves, right? Because if that's the only uh, obstacle in our way, I don't think it's a bad obstacle. I think we can deal with it. Like, I'll, I'll start building boats now. We can all row over there and get them by next year. And we might have to do that. We might have to all just charter planes and fly into Japan. They can't shoot us all out of the sky. And it goes crashing into TEPCO's head office. <laughs> Send your hate mail to Dana. The point is that, you know, if we rose up. Now, I see media rising up. I see all the headlines. I'm just going to come down to comments after. But I see all those headlines at ENE News. And... There's a lot of media speaking out, like Esquire spoke out two days ago, for instance. That's huge. And uh, they played baseball with TEPCO's heads in that article. And I've seen lots of major mainstream media coming out and do that. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, they're really starting to get it. They're truly getting this. And they're all starting to mention the flow under the plant, right? But the backup for these power plants, which that one is a military industrial machine, power was a byproduct of it. But the, the backup for all nuclear plants is first, it has pipes running into the ocean, so it goes in the ocean anyway. All, all plants are throwing it into the ocean, but there's only one with three melted cores. There's only one with uh, another one that is full of uh, hot fuel, fuel rods, fuel rods, and that has no hard water in the pool that have been spraying water in. And so that there's so much damage in there. Think about if bits and pieces of that damage just fell down through those rods and they're the way they symmetrically come out of the hole, they will bind. Try it sometime, T grab some sand and, and have something like a, something that slides in and out and drop your sand in there and see what happens. You'll be shocked. And these rods are already brittle. And, and they're usually done with a computer and sophisticated system that lifts these rods up. But these rods, the pools are twisted. They're twisted. They're deformed. The building has its back broke. The pools are actually physically broken. And, and the, the last thing on the planet we'll ever hear is going to be TEPCO. Fuck, excuse the language, TEPCO messed up. And then the, the death plumes will be worldwide from that one. And it takes three days for it to get across the ocean. The car, jet streams are 100 miles an hour. And the picture you're looking at is where they found all the balloons. I'll change it for you. We see all those states there, and including Canada and Mexico. That's where they found all the balloons in 1944 that Japan sent over on the air current. I'm too close to that microphone, sorry. And that it takes... Um, about three days for those death plumes, and they look like this. This model is wrong. It's uh, only half the time is this model. It says six days to reach to, to reach the coastline, but the angry administrator told me I was wrong, that this was false. He was actually right, and that's how I came up with those balloons, right? Because it takes three days, not six days, to reach our coastlines. Jet streams 100 miles an hour, 24 hours is 2,400 miles. Across the Pacific is only 5,400, 5,800 miles. So, yeah, less than three days to get on our coastline, right? Okay, 23-minute rent that time. Not bad, getting better. I'll come down. There's going to be... Um, I don't know what to do with the audios, folks. Hi, Janet. Hi, T. I'll come up and catch your comments here in a second. Hi, John. Hi, Stephen. Matum. I'll come there in a minute. Let's see who we got here. Ray Clay. We got Derek. Panzer. Albert. Uh, Jerry. Jack. Third Watch. Hi, T. Canterbury. Thank you. Um, dun, dun, dun. I don't know how to pronounce that name. Maybe we'll put glasses on and come a bit closer a little bit, huh? Yeah, look at that. P. Ropel NS uh, coming up. Third watch. Hi, Hippie. Coming down. Almost here. Hi, Miss Milky. Yeah, I just got to the comments after 23 minutes of rattling about meteorites and... That's truly the way I see it, anyway. I uh, bah, 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 bah. make sure I say hi to everybody. We'll go into the comments very quick here. John, we got 
Yeah, I think we got everybody to like. One second. Almost here. Gee. Should have come down earlier. How bad is he? Hi, Ketzer. K E R T E S Z K. Yeah, you're. you're um, a Euro prop. A rearm. I think we got everybody now. Scramble Tank. Felipe. Fred. If the rods melted to the lava, well, if the rods go down on top of the melted cores, it's 9,000 degrees. And so they'll atomize and go up into our, our atmosphere and our troposphere and get lugged all over this planet in no time at all. And they have many times over over the last 900 and 78 days. And we're tired now. You know, we gave them every chance in the world for the first 18 or 17 days. I'm tired of that routine. That don't work. They're going to murder everything on the planet to get away with it. And so I don't see why I should be nice or polite anymore. I don't see any point in that. I don't see why I should hide my contempt and my disgust and my rage I have for these people anymore in the hopes that they'll say, oh, gee, you know, we're listening to Dane. He's a good guy. So we decided to come clean. Like, that's going to happen, right? No. But you get enough people angry and they come out screaming. That they'll get it together. Moose. Uh, hi, Miss Milky. Hi, Kaz and Ray Claire. Nice to bump into you here. Yeah, they probably found me through you, Miss Milky. And Stephen Mahern says, Wisconsin uh, guy yesterday said, Livestock dying well. Producing offspring with big issues. And Fred says, yep, just put moose die off into the Google and you'll see it. Wow, I never heard that one. Um, I'll be looking for it for sure. I think buying radioactive waste was just, burying radioactive waste was just, oh yeah, they were burning it. And as soon as you burn that stuff, you liberate all those isotopes back into the environment, right? Uh, Fred says, greetings, keep hearing from the Pacific die off, but the Pacific die off, even the moose up here in Alaska are dying by the droves. Ice, I'm not laughing at you. That's gallows humor, you can't get away from it sometimes. Hi Dudley. Uh, I got it here, hang on. Dun dun dun. Yeah, there's not. Right, Alaska done a test just after Fukushima, and there was an increase of uh, 134 Cs, 137 cesium, right, Cs, uh, in, uh, on an island up there anyway. And that was emblematic of the islands themselves. And so the next test they're going to do is 2016. If they can get anybody to go in there with a radiating radiation suit on and try they will i should say because in two years that's history that's that's going to be a nuclear wasteland the entire pacific ocean it's unbelievable that it's unbelievable it's inconceivable that we're having these conversations it's a nightmare it's a true nightmare that i wish i would wake up and it wasn't so and every day it's even worse and we can't uh, TEPCO won't give an inch, and we should just go bomb TEPCO right off the planet and go do it ourselves, right? We should send a military industrial machine in there and whack everything in our way. Just kill everything there and go deal with it. That's what we should be doing. It's I'm sick of waiting for answers. It's a good thing I'm not president of a country with a military because TEPCO, I would have them stringing from all the light poles, all, all the executives, all the shareholders, every one of them. They're going to destroy our entire planet and 95% of humanity. Uh, there's more to it than that, I know, General Electric and everybody else included. But it's time to go kick in their, kick in their um, country and take over. And if we're not going to be willing to do that or think about that, then what are we going to do? Kick and scream till it's all over? No, you know, as this planet is waking up, it's going to get worse and worse. They think that I'm, I'm being a little uh, angry or a little bit blown off some wind. Oh, you got no idea what's coming as people wake up. It's anger beyond imagination. And people looking for revenge. I see that all the time now on all the websites and all the chat rooms. It's not just me. 
I've been actually really good for 17 days. I've had a, I got holes in my tongue, biting my tongue in these videos all the time. I won't be biting my tongue anymore. Particularly after that PR stunt they done on me yesterday and then last night. There'll be no more Mr. Nice Guy in my end, I can assure you. I want reality to set in now for people. There's a meteorite coming at us. And you got to get out of the way. There's nothing else you can do about it. And a lot of people knew about it and they didn't want to tell you. Because their job becomes redundant and blah, blah, blah. And that's not an excuse. That's a war crime to me. That's a huge... Uh, and a war crime, I would prosecute myself if I find some. I find out who done it. I won't... They better not get in my range. At a supermarket, I'll bounce a can of soup off their heads as I seize them. That's how much um, I hate their guts with a passion now. I realize the damage is irreversible because they hid it away. And it's just because people like you that forced it out, who've been out there badgering everything out there about it, that's lying and tearing them apart. That's you people. are the only ones left telling the truth and pushing back. And I'm privileged to sit here with you. And I wouldn't trade it in for nothing on this planet. Period. Outside of watching those hanging down there, that would... I would like that. I, I, I think we should go back to burning that steak all day, you know, where we all sit around watching them burn that steak. That I could actually enjoy. Especially with the PR firms. i got to find out who those PR firms are that are spamming over the next... Because it's easy to go back and get all their IP addresses and start putting this together. I want them in trial too. I want them. I want them in jail or dead down the road. I'm telling you right now that you can't. You're not getting away with destroying the planet. I don't care who you are, what you are. The world is waking up. They're coming after you. It's not just me. I'm going to be on your case from now. I make no mistake about it. But the whole world is coming after you now. You PR firms, we're going to make sure you're exposed. You're not getting away with it. I don't think. You can think all you want, how smart you are, and how much money you got, and how much money you're making every day out there murdering people by lying. You're not getting away with it. We're going to find out who you are, and we're taking you down. You're coming down. That's it. All of you are getting exposed, and you're, you're, we're coming after you. You got that ocean, all those communities, all those countries, the entire, every species in that ocean is uh, about to go extinct in the next couple of years because of your lies and your manipulations and your paychecks because you're cowards and you're traitors to the human race and we want you so bad that now we're going to have you. Now we now we get it, see? Let me come down and get some comments because I'm getting wound up a little bit. Salmon in Alaska, that's right. Well, did, uh, hi, Janet, you're welcome. Did the deer, did the deer get into some GMO? For it, <laughs> don't eat GMO, folks. Dandelion, cook your GMO and dandelion. At least do that much. Steve, okay, I just ordered some vision. Okay, we got a conversation, Albert. We are on uncharted water, but we got to look at it as a meteorite and deal it with it the same way as something we could visually see and something that everybody will deal with. They say, okay, it's coming. Right? It's coming at us. Here it is. We can't get away from that one. You can deal with that. Psychologically, we could all deal with it. But if the media comes out with some sad music and tears in their eyes and, and lies, that's another one got to go down in the books too, is the media. Right? There are all these big shot medias out there and Fox and CNN and BBC and CTV and everything else. We ain't going to forget you. Okay? Make no mistake about this. If this goes down bad, you're going to be the first ones gone on this planet. That's a fact. When people find out that you lied and that you knew better and that you, you muddled it and that you deceived people and, and all your videos are all over the net, you can never get away from it. You can never get away from that. People are going to see you on the streets. They're going to see you everywhere. And they're going to rage. Not yell, but they're going to rage. A whole new level. That you ain't never experienced before. I can guarantee you. When people are pissed off. And I tell them now. Here in this town. I mean they lose their minds. Because they understand I'm not lying. And I mean I see the rage. That's where I'm getting it. There's people in this town. That's. Uh, I got a friend of mine here. He's got over a million dollars. In this. In this venture. And he's locked in. And his wife. And she raged yesterday. Like I've never seen before. 
when she when she she asked me and I explained it to her and it was like 10 minutes of just rage people are going to lose it because you won't because the, the government and the media is all hiding this from us and then you got all these PR firms who we're going to hunt down we're going to hunt down all the players all the executives all those investors every bloody one of them yeah thanks Albert I'm just saying that this this is not uh, might happen. That's what's going to happen unless they come out and say that meteorite is coming and we need to band together and do something. That's the next year or two years. This is going to happen to these people because people are going to find out. And they're I mean they're looking at media when they when they ask me why didn't why doesn't media tell us? You know it's kind of hard for them to understand. Originally once it sinks it into their head, you can see it's just a switch. And I, I, I've seen it so many times now. I know what's going to happen. That's why I say the things I'm saying. Yeah, 970 days plus sums it up. Nothing is safe anymore. And it's going to get. It's going to keep on going because nobody will tell the truth. Right? There's got to be people like me that's actually got to come out and say there's a million gallons a minute, 1,440 million minutes in a day, 4.3 billion gallons a day, not 300 tons. You lying monsters. Oh, the ocean is okay. It, it, uh, what is it? Deludes that. I swear to goodness, if someone like that was to get in front of my face and say that to me, I would slap them right in the face as hard as I could. And I couldn't do nothing about that. I'd probably slap them again on the other side immediately for lying like that to me. And it wouldn't be a nice slap. Because it's the stupidest thing imaginable. You can't delude an isotope. You spread it out and make it more scarier. It's that really truly like that. Look at those thousands of miles of clouds picking up all that cesium, that strontium, that plutonium in the ocean and spreading that all over and whisk, whisking it across. Oh, you know, it takes five or six years for the currents to bring it over, but it doesn't take that long for a thousand miles of cloud to snatch it up and drag it over and throw it up into the atmosphere and everywhere else and whisk it around this planet, this whole bloody planet. And now I get it. It's 19 days since we've been banging our heads because of that earthquake, trying to get pictures. And it's okay, that, right? Because that's what forced this out now. What, that's what's forcing it out there, is the fact that they closed down the internet. They got martial law. They have 100% control of their internet traffic. It's missing. And the media and all the tech blogs don't even mention it. And so they're all cultable. They're all guilty. Every bloody one of these big players, they're going to pay the price in the next couple of years. It's no good for them to go into their bunkers because we'll dig them out with shovels. That's what's going to end up happening to all these people if it goes bad. Hi, Amanda. We need a way to test radiation on the West Coast. Yeah, once again, you need 1,300 Geiger counters for 1,300 weaponized isotopes. And then you need each Geiger counter calibrated to a Pacific isotope. And these are weaponized, hit away, excuse me, isotopes. And then you need people to know how to use those Geiger counters. And if you sniff pro improperly with these Geiger counters, because they got different kinds of gases, four and five and six different types of gases inside of it. And if you excite, you have to wait quite a while for that to stop exciting. It's not like something where you press a button and the, the video plays, okay? This is real. Uh, and this technology, these Geiger counters that we all uh, associate these things with, they're for low rad counts, low gamma beta particle counts. They're not meant for these massive death plumes from all the aerosol um, rods that are falling down on top of the decordiums that we don't know. But we know the temperatures coming out have been recorded at over 9,000 degrees. And um, you can't get very close to that, and you're, you're going to get atomized, you know? And which is... Uh, a gram of strontium uh, will produce more radioactive than all the than all the grains of sands on all the beaches on the planet. Just a gram, and there's hundreds of thousands of tons of this stuff down there. And Tefco is hey, everything's okay. Yeah, no, here's fine. And it's just lie after lie. And the video I got below my video here uh, is uh, fair winds. He's talking about, this is a new video, he's talking about building four. A friend of mine uh, texted me, and I went and looked at it, and she was right. Like, yeah, 
you know, I'm glad she sent that to me right away before I went on air. So I got that narrative out there. It's a so important narrative. That's why the video is below my videos because that's so important to go watch. Because Fairwinds designs those pools. He designs it, right? So he knows. And uh, he shows, you know, in other previous videos how building four, the structural integrity, the back is broken on us. And then we have a 7.2 earthquake 19 days ago and nobody knows, right? Nobody can prove that building four, five, and six are still standing. Nobody can prove that because they got the internet locked down. Thanks, T. Callis. Uh, Panzer, you won't need Geiger counters when the Pacific is boiling. <laughs> Hi, John. Puppy's doing so good today, you know. I'm so happy. Uh, yesterday, too, she jumped down and went strutting off after a squirrel. And I was like, wow, that is so cool to see. That really made me feel happy. And I picked her up, and she's no squealing. Uh, so that's really cool. It's, yeah. And I even said that to Roger tonight. You remember I had up under on the seventh day or something like that? I was saying to Roger how absolutely thrilled I am today to see that she's like she's my back to my little puppy again, right? That's a pretty cool thing. I'll come down and we'll start to wind things down. Put Panzer left off at you won't need any Geiger counters when the Pacific is bubbling. That's a frightening comment. It's a brilliant comment too, by the way, but that's a frightening comment. Each counter only counts one isotope, right? Yeah, and that makes things hard, Fred. Yeah. James Wong. Hi, James. I would suggest stocking up on clean water, heirloom seeds, right? Clean soil, right? <laughs> and a greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at one. Um, you dig like 20 feet down, and you put a roof over that, and then the natural temperature of the earth, and so the sunlight comes down. Now you do it a southerly exposure in the... Northern Hemisphere and a northern exposure in the west in the southerly hemisphere, I think it is. Uh, and you can grow vegetables all year long, even coldest climates possible, because you're down below the frost lines, and so the temperature is good. So yeah, I mean you can do it, right? That's all. Let's keep going. Uh, Jacko, it's a totally different building. Don't buy the stuff. Uh, I missed that one, I guess. Man, the P. Manda P. New World Order at work here, not just Japan. No, that's right. But Japan won't let anybody in there. So, I mean, they're under pressure because no one wants... Uh, the nuclear industry is one of the, you know, the military industrial machine. The last thing it wants is people to find out about that. Hi, Miss Milky. Longbow, uh, so sorry, unbelievable. We're sorry, yeah. That won't work no more. Longbow, uh, so sorry, unbelievable. So, well, sorry got us this mess we got out here right i get it i mean it's a tradition but that's a tradition that we don't need anymore i make sure i'm trying to didn't miss anybody i've done pretty good the last time i went through all of it all right yeah that'll leave that's right fred blasting hippie see i missed that one pitchforks at the ready that a boy thank you t callus Number one for Amanda, plus one for Amanda. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, let me come up, John. I got you, thank you. Yeah, and so folks, what happens when I'm doing those comments and people are throwing comments out there? Then my, my thing, like your will too, right? It'll go bugger, bugger, and I'll lose, I'm trying to read, maybe I even try to hang on, that's why I'm leaning head, holding down, I still, it won't hang on to it, and then I gotta go looking for the comment to finish the next couple of lines, and then more people are commenting, which is awesome, but it moves the comments instantly, and so, I think in the future, what I'll do is I'll take screen captures, whenever I see a comment, I'll go screen capture, say on this computer, and I'll put it here, on the edge here, and that way, if, when people are commenting, it won't drive the comment out of the way, and I can actually, be, I'd probably get in another 30 comments a session that way. So I got. I thought about that last night after. So I got to do that this time. Actor Dennis Weaver has house like that called an Earth ship. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they're actually really cool. They're really simple to do. For like 300 bucks, you can build one of those. I mean, you got to dig that 20 foot uh, ditch, but still, it, it's not too bad. See? Okay, I'll come back up, and we'll make sure. Make sure I get everybody. I think I've done pretty good. 
And a video on hemp seeds. Yeah, hemp seeds are incredibly good for you, folks. Just incredible amount of minerals. Once again, it's a dandelion routine. And if you want DCA, go to a health shop and get it. Uh, they sell it at health shops, right? Because it's a mineral and there's no prescriptions. I always say pharmacy, right? But that was just so people could convince themselves and also teach the pharmacists about the DCA at the same time. But I probably shouldn't do it. I should tell you just to go to the health stores and get it. I think is uh, important too, you know. And if you do go to the pharmacy, you educate them, right? Um, I don't see the comment I was looking for, so I'll come back. Hemp seeds, uh, watching some documentaries on the birth defects by Cher, uh, Chernobyl. Like, there's a 3,800 kilometer exclusion zone around Chernobyl with just one reactor melted down. And so, uh, Cher, uh, Fukushima has three. It's okay, Zoe. Yeah, it's okay, honey. No, it's okay. What, what's going on? No, it's okay. Hang on. Come see Dana. Right here. She must have heard something out there. Okay, uh, let me come up and finish it up. Since 311. Okay, Zoe, I get it. I get it. It's okay. Yeah, see, she's feeling good, eh? It's a good talk. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so there was uh, one... The borated rubber between the fuel is damaged in unit 4 pool. You get them, Zoe. Increased risk of criticality. Criticality. Uh, the economists. The rods can explode if they collide. And because Japan has, sorry, because Japan has censored the internet, we don't have proof the buildings are even standing or what kind of shape they're in. Remember, they're only wrapped up in a Kevlar shrink wrap that's nothing it's just like wrapping it in a shrink wrap and putting something in your fridge you know it really truly is and the reason they're using kevlar uh, shrink wrap was because that building was damaged and there was just blunt metal and sharp metal rather and all this stuff sticking out and they don't want to puncture it because a tear will cause it to continue to tear i'm sure the kevlar is a lot better but still when you're talking about such a big building like building four we don't know what's going on with building five there's reports of fires and smoke at building five and six no one can debunk that and that's a very real possibility they've been pouring all that you remember that uh what david suzuki said five days after 7.2 that if they had a seven accident that building was finished they would never get back in there and so they could be faking it, and that's why they're rushing this thing out saying they're going to do building four and they're going to say they're finished early and blah 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 and then everybody will go away hopefully leave them alone but there's three other pools on top of that they still got to be that were cracked and they have to pour water into it's not just the hot pool but that's the most immediate threat that's the most serious threat because those types of rods are vicious and they will uh, take down the whole bloody building on themselves see so it's not only the building tipping it's not only the 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 deformed pools, which is like a deformed cigarette pack. And you got a deformed cigarette pack, you just got to pull these rods out. They're already brittle. The conians are already burnt off them. And if they release any fumes, you have to evacuate and then gas off that fumes. But that fumes is extraordinarily volatile. That's how we come. We see those hydrogen explosions before was because those rods had... Um, let me bring up one of those pictures. Because those rods had a lot of damage. And that's what caused the four explosions to the four reactors and if you actually go look at close-up pictures of the damage nothing's changed folks they put a wrapper around it but they can't get in there and work on it because there's rods everywhere and if you got a piece of rod you know the size it is here i couldn't finish that sentence and you wouldn't if it was in your home you wouldn't get to hear me finish that sentence and you would see your pet fall over and you'd be going what's that Ooh, and you'd be dead and then when the mailman come up the next morning and try to put the mail in the box, he'd be dead. And then when someone walked in to see why the mailman was dead, they'd be dead. And you see how this works? These isotopes and these gamma and betas is, they're so prolific. 
that. Like you say, if you had just one isotope floating around in here, everything ends up becoming radiated because it's pulsing out the gamma particles and the betas. Hi Zoe, what are you looking for? Squirrels, mice, rats, raccoons? A lot of cougars out here, right? We got some big cougars. And um, just sometimes I'm worried with my puppy. That's a decent meal for a cougar. I had a friend of mine uh, a number of years back, his five-year-old kid got killed by a cougar. And another friend of mine was a trapper. He went in and uh, the cougar had six puppies. And that was like, he felt so bad because he had to kill those puppies because they were eating on the human flesh, right? Um, but it turned out that the government knew about that cougar. Lots of people had reported the cougar over and over and over and over and over. And, um, and that kid, you know, he was, I can't remember his name anymore. It's quite a while back, but he was such a good kid. And I went down, I went off, I went off on those people because they didn't take care of that earlier. They didn't try to trap it and move it out of there or whatever the case may be. And that's what we're seeing now, is we're seeing all this killing going on and people don't have an opportunity or don't even know there's a danger deer. And that big meteorite is coming at us and it's not gonna change its trajectory. But we have the ability to do something to that meteorite, that to minimize it anyway, to marginalize it a little bit. We have the ability now to get it out of the way and, but most people don't, and most people probably will never, because our media, our governments, the collusions, the outright outrageous, unforgivable, and accountable down the road lies they're telling. This traitor to our race, to the human planet, to the animals, to the biosphere, to the troposphere, to our, all of our oceans, all of our fresh waters, is all so encompassing that if they, if they think for a second they're going to get to spend the spoils of their riches, I can assure you that is not going to happen. I can assure you that will never happen. I see the rage now. It's growing at an exponential rate because you won't tell the truth, and that causes the anger. That causes, that causes the contempt I have for you and everybody else have for you people that are orchestrating this deception. And it's a deception that is only going to last for a little while. You won't get away with it. You can't hide away from that future that's coming for you, from these people that will come for you. You can never escape that. No matter what you're getting away with right now, no matter what TEPCO thinks they're able to pull off and trick and deceive people, those days are over. They're over. You're, you're, you're up on the green mile, whether you realize it, realize it or not. Because society is waking up and a lot of more smarter, more articulate um, are looking now. And so your gig is over. The only option you got left is come clean and tell people about that big meteorite and give them an opportunity to get out of the way. And if you don't do that, I, I, I wouldn't want to be in your position next year and the year after, I can assure you. I can assure you um, that that's true what I'm saying here, folks. And you all probably know that anyway. I miss Milk the Clown. I'm finishing up here, actually. So, John, uh, you get some problems, I guess. I'll run back up. Catch just catch the 53 minutes. That's pretty good. I'll check for any last comments. And I just can't stress enough how important it is that, you know, we, we face, we get a chance to face what we got. Right, this deception can't work anymore. It's, uh, that was their game. They weren't going to tell us. They were going to let everybody blame it on telephones, blame the cancer on the GMO, blame the cancers on the vaccines, blame the cancer on your pipes in your house, and all this other stuff. And they can't hold it back anymore. Say it's, they just can't hold it back anymore. And so, rather than panic the population, we need to come in and explain to them there is a meteorite coming at us. Say, and we can do something. And, and if we don't. Then who's responsible? We'll pay a price before we do, I can assure you. Because this is a game changer. This is going to kill democracies, period. Right? Going to kill that illusion. Okay, let me catch up on any comments. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Thanks, John. Thanks, Panzer. 
I'll catch up tomorrow, folks. Thanks, Albert. T. Cole one. Thank you. I'll check that for sure. Albert. Let me go down. Hippie. Fred. James. Wong. Amanda. Uh, Derek. Once again, Blast Hippie. And Ray Clay. Uh, I can't pronounce your name. And Janet, of course, as always. We always appreciate your kindness. And all the other people out there that I'm not going to catch that are putting their weight behind me all the time. I can never think enough. Dudley's. Uh, Stephen. We got everybody, I think, pretty well. There's no way I can get to everybody, so I'm not even going to try at this stage. I was giving it my best try that time, but like... I think it's important that I recognize and say hi and thank you to everybody that comes in and tries their best to inform themselves and help in the debate and bring some logic to this. Because I think we all find it in our personal lives because of the media, the deception is continuing on but it's not going to last much longer. And that it's better to come out than to have us coming after you down the road for what you've done. Because we're not going to forgive and we're not going to forget. Make no mistake about it. And we're looking and we're organizing and we're, we're making sure everybody else is aware of what happened and who's responsible is just right behind the next wall. And as that comes out, you know, your police state is not going to protect you. The military is going to come looking for you. You're not going to have anybody on your side as this comes out is the problem if you don't come out and I'm talking to the people responsible for that, letting all this pollution destroy our planet. TEPCO, you know, who's now in control, I have to direct it at them. General Electric's made these things. There's all kinds, there's enough responsibility to spread around, and we're going to try to include everything and everybody. But right now, TEPCO's the ones that was lying. They're the ones that continue to lie. They're the ones that fear when in the video below this site you should go watch after are manipulating and fair winds tear it apart what their lies are it's worth watching it really is informative and so they got to go before the fuel rods are removed and then we need war crimes to to um, try these people even if they stay on the site now it still don't matter we want uh, we want uh, trials for these people these are the worst criminals ever in the history of humanity these are the worst people on the planet there is no comparison to the death and the misery they're going to bring in the next couple of years. In the next uh, short few years, you're going to see this everything in the ocean. Because if the ocean is radiated, there's no oxygen. If there's no oxygen, a fish can't breathe. Take a fish, drop him in a bucket, come back later and see how long he survived. It's as simple as that. If there's no oxygen in the water, it doesn't matter how much food. You can throw pellets out there to feed them if you want to. It won't make any difference. And that's what radiation does it puts off so much energy for so long it kills all the oxygen abilities of the ocean and so that means everything will die at a faster and faster accelerated rate and it's a big place so we don't see a lot and the stuff we do see is uh worth paying attention and there's a lot of it night all thanks third watch thanks hippie Derek, fred john canterbury um Susan, I know you're out there, and everybody else. We'll see you tomorrow, day 20. And once again, you know, I see I see we're breaking through. I see a difference that as we get more intelligent, more smarter with our uh, lines, with our comebacks, they have less wiggle room. And when you do that to them, that makes their life extraordinarily uncomfortable. So just that little thing alone, by coming out with a sentence of the truth, you made their lives miserable, see? And if you can have millions of people doing that on the blogs, which they are, then you change the game. And it doesn't take long at that rate for it to start to accelerate because people read those comments and watch those videos, right? And as a unit, we all make a difference. And so once again, you know, Miss Milky, the clown, is always posting, folks. If you're trying to keep up with things, that's a great, just incredibly great site. You can't ask for any better. 
And Fairwind's video is below this video, and that's uh, that's vital you understand all of that. So I watched it twice. I'll be watching it another time right after this just to make sure. And we'll see you tomorrow on day 20. Take care, folks.